Uh, the Atlantis abutment is a customised abutment, it's a CAD CAM abutment, abutment, so the fact it's CAD CAM means that, um, that some of the human error has been taken out of the design and uh, manufacture of the abutment. So, um, rather like the, um, the, the Osteospeed implant that ASCO have has got the biomanagement complex um, to describe it, the Atlantis um, abutment has got the bio design matrix. And it's basically, it's defined by four key characteristics that it's born out of virtual abutment design, and we'll talk about that in a second. The fact that the abutments have got a very natural shape. The fact that the, as a clinician, we can dictate to the technician how we want the soft tissues to heal around it. And also the fact that it's got this um, customized connection. So th let's talk about virtual abutment design. This is the key and probably the most important characteristic of the abutment. And it, it comes back to this concept of reverse treatment planning. You can see on the, on the left, I'll just drag the thing. On the left hand side, we have um, an, an idealized wax up of where we want the final tooth position to be. And it's from this wax up that the abutment is designed. So the abutment is designed, first of all, so it's large enough, so we've got maximum surface area for bonding. Um, but also small enough to allow sufficient uh, layering of material so that the, the desired aesthetic result um, can be achieved. Um, but the fact that we have got this um, um, design from the final abutment also means that the cement margin is finished um, where we want it to be as well. So this means that when we fit the um, abutment and the final crown that goes on it, we find that the cement margin is much closer to the mouth and far less subgingival than if we were using a modified stock abutment. And, and the relevance of this we're going to look into in a great deal more detail um, shortly. So the natural shape, and when these Atlantis abutments come back from the laboratory, they, they look more like abutments that we were prepared from teeth. And I, if the, the sort of clinicians that, and the technicians that are here, I, I just put it to you, a lot of the abutments we get back from the laboratory are, are, are ridiculously small, really, a bit like on this slide here. You can see the abutment on the right-hand side is the Atlantis abutment, but the one over to the left is a, is a modified stock abutment. They're both the same platform width, but I, I'd simply ask the, um, the clinicians, what would you rather be sticking your um, crown onto? Um, obviously, with a lo much larger surface area on the Atlantis abutment where the green arrow is at the moment, but the crown is much more likely to stay on and we're much more likely to fail to have um, use of, get away with using a provisional cement, which is what we feel more comfortable with probably as implant um, clinicians and just to get that retrievability. Um, I'm going to go back to the previous slide, if I may, um, where we've got um, divergent uh, implants which have been placed which are slightly divergent. The software will parallel up, parallel up the implants um, which obviously improves the accuracy of fit of um, multi-link units. But also, you can see the soft tissue contour here goes, it, it, we don't have this situation where by measly and uh, buckly and politely rather, those um, are only just subgingival, but measly and distally, incidentally, they're, they're very deep. So you'll see in the clinical slides later on, it follows the soft tissues all the way around which makes cementation a great deal more straightforward. And of course teeth aren't round in cross-section, uh, canines are sort of triangular in cross-section and central incisors and laterals are sort of more ovoid in cross-section. And if we're using modified stock abutments which are round in cross-section, this may affect the way the soft tissue heal around the abutment, which can have an impact on the, um, the soft tissue healing and particularly demanding aesthetic zones. Um, the, one of the key characteristics of the Atlantis abutment is that we can dictate to the, um, the technician um, what kind of um, healing we want. We can ask that, um, if, for example, where we have a thin biotype, we have no tissue displacement at all. Um, we ask for, when I'm prescribing these and there's a very thin biotype, I ask for no buckle pressure just to help minimise the chances of getting a, a recession defect. But conversely, if we've got um, an area whereby we're trying to um, generate papillae, then we, we might want to try and ask for some pressure into interlinear and hope that those papillae may um, generate. 
And that's a fairly unique thing to the um, Git Labs abutment. It's not something that's, that we can do, obviously, if we're using um, a stock abutment. And of course, the, um, the, the connection of the abutment to the, um, the implant is very important. Um, there's research done by, um, well, first of all, it's the uh, Atlantis abutment is available for all the major um, implant systems, um, such as obviously Astro, it's an Astro product, but all the other ones which are listed here, um, which means that the it's, it's available for all those, so it's allowing surgeons an awful lot um, of choice. For example, the um, the gold abutment. Um, if you wanted to use the gold abutment, you've only got um, one other choice if you're using um, any other system, and that's uh, cast gold. So it, it's it, it's good that this um, Astro have made this product available for um, most of the major different systems. But the accuracy of the fit is important um, as well, um, and it's been um, looked at by Keith Priestman in his paper. That speculated that um, because CAD CAM abutments basically have had the least amount of meddling done to them, if you like, then they've got the most, the right to have the most accurate fit. And that's important because if the abutment doesn't fit accurately to the implant, there's a chance of screw loosening um, or a micro gap um, at the implant interface, which could colonise bacteria and lead to, to bone loss. So when I was asked to initially give this talk, um, I asked, asked to give about challenging cases. I mean, like I said at the start, the, one of the problems I had is that using Atlantis has largely removed the challenge um, when I'm doing restorative dentistry on uh, implants. They just make it so straightforward. But the four areas that I've, I'm looking at in particular are the, the central incisor, which is the most difficult thing in dentistry, obviously. Um, aesthetic molars, we're going to look at multiple linked units. And uh, we're going to restore, uh, looking at where we've placed implants outside the prosthetic envelope when something hasn't gone quite according to plan or we've had to make a compromise. So the, the real issue with the central incisor tube is obviously getting the aesthetics right and trying to get symmetry of the central incisor um, next to the, the adjacent central incisor. And that's dictated by a few things, partly the shape. Um, now, obviously, the, the VAD software is going to help us enormously when we're getting the shape right because we're doing it from an idealised wax up. So we can be reasonably hopeful that if if the um, abutment is being born out of an idealised wax up of the, of the um, final crown, then we're up to the best possible start in hoping that the shape of the crown is going to be correct. And when we've got a single central incisor missing next to the adjacent one, the software can um, we can ask the software to do a mirror image of the adjacent central incisor, um, which obviously very much helps in the, in the planning of the case and, and achieving that symmetrical shape. Then we've got the issue of getting the shade right. Um, well, again, because the uh, Atlantis are brought out a variety of abutment types, then we've got the best chance of doing that. So we've got the standard titanium abutments that you can see on the left. This is one I probably use about 95% of the time. But they've also got the um, the gold hue abutment in the middle, which is a titanium nitride coated um, uh, abutment. Uh, but they've also got the um, zirconia abutment, and the zirconia abutment is available um, not only as, as, as the white one, but also they're brought out in shades which are roughly equivalent to B1, A1, and B2. So th this is giving us the best range of options in order to get the, the aesthetics right. With these demanding cases in the um, in the aesthetic zone. Next thing, the major issue really for me is um, getting the crestal, preserving the crestal bone. This is um, a cross section of a central incisor in a CT scan, and usually the the buccal plate is so thin you can't even see it on a CT scan. I mean, it's incredibly thin. So. When we're placing an implant, we're, we're taught surgically to try and leave at least a millimetre of buccal plate um, there in order to try and help the, st the um, soft, soft tissue stability, because obviously the, we need the bone there to um, support the soft tissue. So but there are other things that we can do to try and help preserve this crustal bone. For example, there's the surgical technique, so we can employ techniques like guided bone